Hello all, welcome to this tutorial on Miller and Morivani Proposition 1 with Taxes. I have grossly simplified this example. This example also shows the effect of leverage. And if we do some example, we will know what's going on. The whole idea about this is that interest provides us a lot of tax saving. This video demonstrates that. Once again, let me restate this. Interest provides companies saving and we gonna demonstrate that we always hear in the class that you know interest is tax deductible interest is tax tax deductible but we have to see a concrete example and verify that so in this video we're gonna do that so assume we have a levered firm which levered firm means that levered firm means that you have borrowed and you have a leverage and unlevered means that you haven't borrowed you have zero equity so we have a firm that's levered and has borrowed thousand dollars of perpetual bonds at eight percent interest each year and there's another firm which is fully financed by equity you can see here that assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equities. So assets of the Leeward, the Leeward firm is thousand dollars plus zero. This is the liabilities. This is the bonds that we have borrowed at eight percent perpetually, and this is on Leeward firm. It has zero liabilities and thousand dollars worth stock equity so you can see here that our leverage firm has uh, a huge debt thousand dollars of debt and the unlevered firm has uh, zero debt and thousand dollars equity and let's look at this example we have assumed that uh, the our earnings before interest and taxes is thousand dollars each year um, and for the levered firm is also one thousand dollars earning before interest and taxes is same for both the firms <coughs> so let's fill this table and see what happens so our interest is zero because so it's all equity for the unlevered unlevered means that we have zero debt and for the levered firm we said that we borrowed at eight percent so that means we have this earnings before in tax. We got to pay. Oh, sorry, not earnings before in tax. We we had uh, we we borrowed thousand dollars. We got to pay eight percent, eight percent each year as interest. So eighty dollars is our interest expense over here. And let's calculate the uh, taxable income, which is. Which is earnings before interest and taxes minus the interest. This is earning before interest and taxes minus or less of interest expense. And let's calculate for the liver firm. This is thousand minus eighty. So this is your taxable income. This is our earnings for in finance it's also known as our operating expense EBIT operating expense so we have our taxable income this is our taxable income and we have to pay tax corporate tax which is 30 percent so this is a taxable income times 0.30 that's your taxable income we do the same here this is 920 times that's your taxes that you have to pay. So your net income will be your taxable income minus 
your taxes. And for this, it's going to be 900 minus your taxes. Okay. Now, now we're going to calculate the most important part of this module which is cash flow from assets. How you calculate cash flow from assets is you subtract your earnings before interest and taxes minus the taxes because taxes is cash paid and we assume that we have no change in net working capital and we have also assumed that we don't have any fixed capital investments. So we assume this is your operating uh, revenues. We didn't have any uh, uh, net change in working capital and after adjustment for the accounting treatment, um, our cash flow from operation is 1000. So if you less taxes, if you subtract that your taxes, what were your taxes for the firm undelivered? Your taxes were $300 and your tax over here for the delivered firm were 270 so right now this is cash flow from assets which means how much cash your assets has generated in other words this is also the cash flow from operations so this is cash flow from operations or stated otherwise stated differently this is cash flow from assets so if you look at that your cash flow from assets is earnings before interest and tax minus the tax that you have to pay so your cash flow from assets is 700 over here that's EBIT minus this wow so you can see the, the cash flow from assets is greater for the layered firm the reason is we have we have a tax saving here okay and that tax saving is 24 dollars that tax saving is 24 dollars that's your tax saving so we can see that the tax saving is 24 the this the value of the labor firm is greater the value of our labor firm is greater than the value of our unlevered firm. That's because we had an interest saving. How do you calculate that interest saving? It's also known as the tax shield. And this tax shield is calculated this way. This, your interest expense was 80, right? This is your interest expense over here. It was $80. So $80 times your, your tax was 0.24. So this is what your, I'll write down the formula, your tax shield equals your interest expense times taxes. Okay. So the value of the delivered from which is 724 equals to the value of unlivered from plus the interest times the tax. So what's your value of the unlivered firm? That is 724. What's the value? What's the value of the delivered firm? 724. That equals to what's the value of the unlivered firm? is 700 so 700 equals to the value of uh, sorry the, the value of delivered from the 724 I apologize my bad 724 equals 700 
plus your interest expense most 80 times the corporate tax most point 50. This 80 is your interest expense from here. Did you get it? Interest expense from here. And, and the tax rate is here 30 point 30. So if you do that, you're going to get this solution. Let's convince ourselves. So the value of the labor firm was 700. Was 720, right? This should be equals to the value of the unlevered firm plus the interest times the uh, tax, which was 20. You see, you got the same answer. Thank you for watching this video.